Hello everybody, this is Melanie here with Melanie B's Creative Studio and today I want to share with you some tips that I feel like will speed up your diamond painting process. So first of all, what we're going to start with is I'm going to go ahead and use a diamond painting that I've been working on and you've seen in prior videos because I already have all the pieces and components set up for it. So I don't want to spend a lot of time showing you things that are very simple, but I want to show you how I have it set up. I'm also going to show you the tools that I use to make things quicker, and I'm going to give you some tips on using a multi-placement tool or a multi-drill tool. I've heard different terms for that particular item, but I'm going to show you what I think works the best when you're using that particular tool. I also want to do a side-by-side -side comparison as far as how long it takes to manually do one drill at a time in comparison to using the multi-drill tool and applying three at a time. So I've seen some other videos from other companies and they were, the, the woman was saying that she feels like that um, it's faster for her to just use one at a time. So let's get started. First of all, when you first start a diamond painting, what you're going to want to do is organize your drills in the method that works best for you. What I personally do is I use a couple of different types of containers. There are so many on the market right now, but this is my system and it's pretty affordable and that is why I use this. So I get these containers in a six pack from Amazon and I'm going to link you to it in the description so that you can go directly to that. This is the way they come. They're, you know, empty like this, and they're in little sets of four. Now, I've seen something about break-apart ones. I don't care if they break apart or not. It doesn't really bother me that they're all put together like, you know, in sets of four. That's fine with me. Whatever works best for you is what I, I recommend that you do. Before I start, I take all of my drills out of their packages, their little containers or bags, and I pour them in a numerical order into one of these little containers. Now, these little containers are kind of deceiving. They're small, but they hold quite a bit of drills, and I can't give you a number, um, but I can tell you that they really do hold quite a few drills. So most of the time, I can get an entire bag into one of these and then just label it with that number. So what I do is I take a little white label, and with a Sharpie, I write down the DAC number, um, which is the Diamond Art Club, number, which is also the DMC number. Um, and the reason I mark it with DAC is so that I know which project this is gonna go with. On the front, I take the sticker of the one that I'm working on, like this one is the I Miss You from Diamond Art Club, and I put that on there, or you could put a label or something, and just say this is the one that this is for. This is the painting these particular drills are for. The other thing I do is with Diamond Art Club, they do come with a smaller schematic, so I keep it tucked in here with it closed so that I know this is what these are for. Okay, so going back to this, um, you can label it with a Sharpie directly on the clear container. Over time, the more you use it, that will come off. But the beauty of it is, it, is that it does come off. When you're done, and I'm finished with this uh, particular project, the I Miss You project, and I wanna continue to use these containers, I'm gonna have to peel off all these labels or just replace them with a new label. Um, but the reason I did label them this time instead of using a Sharpie is because I do tend to wear off that Sharpie from the container and then I'm going, which color was that? So, you know, whichever works for you, but at the end, if I have just used a Sharpie on the, you know, directly on the plastic, then I can take a cotton ball with some alcohol on it and just wipe it off. It just erases completely and I can start from scratch with these new, these new containers. So this is how I get started. And then, like I said, they're all in numerical order. So I have 128, 130, one, you know, and so, and so on. And then I put them in here in numerical order. That way, when I'm looking for a color number, I'm going directly to, you know, this container and I'm going, oh, I need 758. And so they're, because they're in numerical order, it's easier to find the ones that I need. So let's set that aside. Now for the, for the bags that you get, the multiple bags, the ones that you have a ton of like black or white, you know, I take one of these containers and I got this from Michaels. Um, I'm sure you can find them at other arts and craft stores, but this is just a larger rounder container. So this is what it looks like. So I'll take the bags of 
that I have a ton of that particular color. Like this one is 820, and you'll notice that I have three 820s in here. Um, you could just use one for each color, however you wanna do it. But what I do is I like to have them ready to use. And so these are kind of my backup colors. I don't like using the Ziploc bags. I do use those sometimes, but I feel like, I don't know, I just feel like it's so disorganized for me to be able to pull those out really fast and go through them and whatnot. So I tend to not like that system as well, even though in past videos, that's probably what I've said. But once I found this, I was like, oh, this is a better idea. So these just unscrew, you know, and will stay put together. Okay. And this has also got a lid for it. It came with the lid. One more thing. I want to go back to this system very quickly. And I didn't show you this. So the ones that I showed you, the large ones I showed you actually screw shut. These pop, like click shut. It's not a real solid click, but they do click shut, which I do like. And then this system, this box clicks and locks completely. I like this <clears throat> because it's not a flimsy plastic. It's a thicker plastic and it holds up really well, but I like the fact that these click open and I don't have to like unscrew and rescrew and you know, that kind of thing. So it's a lot quicker for me to use these. I have done a video on tools that I've used. So make sure that you refer to that one. In my prior videos, I've been using a clear tray and then Diamond Art Club sent me the white one. Now I had a couple of these white ones prior, but I like the white ones better because they're a little bit larger, they hold more, and they seem to straighten out your, your drills quicker and more efficiently. So I do really like this larger white um, tray with the funnel. So with the funnel, the purpose of the funnel, this helps speed things up because once you've got a color in here, then you can just take it back to your container and just pour it back into this container when you're done, okay? So it's quicker if you've got the funnel. You don't have a big mess, you're not having to go like tip something up and it just come falling out on the sides. So this is a nice little tool to have. It seems simple, but it really does make a difference in your speed of working. Now, if you have a lot of these, you can take a Sharpie and write the color number, put your color in here and set it aside and have a whole line of these ready so that when you just wanna pick up a color and go, you've got it ready. That is another, that's a quick idea. Um, I don't do that. I don't have as many of the white ones as I would like. So apparently I need to start collecting more of those. Next, we're gonna talk about the multi-drill section of your tool. Now, some companies send a multi-drill adapter, like this one is. This one just clicks right into this tool. And this one is from Diamond Art Club, but some of other companies send these as well. This one actually holds three drills, which I like. I don't feel very competent with the ones with five or more. I like the one with three, and I feel like it's very efficient for me to use. In order to use this one, and again, I've shown this in a prior video, but I will go ahead and give you just a quick rundown. You're just gonna take your wax, and you're going to push the larger end into it and make sure you've got some wax in there. So the one thing you wanna make sure is that your wax isn't sticking out too much to where it's gonna collect drills on the sides. Now what I wanna do is I'm gonna show you how to get your drills lined up in your tray. And then, like I said, we're gonna take a section and we're gonna do it with the multi-tool and time it. And then we're going to do a section with the um, other side of the tool and time it just at one at a time and see which one of these is the most efficient. For me, the multi-tool is the fastest, but there are things to it that might slow you down if you have not ever gotten used to it. The trick to this thing is to practice with it. Once you've practiced with it, you're gonna feel a lot more competent at it. Okay, so let's get some, tool, uh, some drills in our tray and I'm gonna find a section here that I feel like is gonna be quick to show you for our multi-drill. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this portion right here. The reason I'm gonna do that one is because it's not just 
the hourglass is not just 820 through here. There's some other colors kind of mixed in. And that's a good opportunity for me to show you when you're using the multi-use tool, tool how to avoid the sections with other colors and make it efficient. So let me get out number 820. Okay, so here is 820 in my container. I'm just gonna pop it open, make sure these others are clicked shut and pour out a nice little pile. Now you'll notice I don't close this. When I set this over here, I leave it open. And that way, if I have to step away and come back, I know what color I'm working on. This is just a quick way for me to come back and know I'm working on 820 right now. Because when you walk away, you may think you'll remember, you really probably won't. All right, now the trick to the tray is either hold it in your hand with the funnel against your hand like this and shake it back and forth with your canvas covered, because you will have one's bail, or I hold it with just kind of covering it up with my finger and shake it back and forth like this. Now you'll see them bouncing around. Once they stop kind of bouncing around in there, then you're gonna take it and I slide it back and forth, kind of tilting it at an angle kind of like this to get them to slide in this direction. You can tap the edge if you want. I feel like this system kind of works better for me. Now, I don't care if I have a little pool of them over here. You see how they've kind of just pulled up right there? That's okay. I'm gonna use the ones here first anyway to show you for this demonstration. Now, because I'm coming up here and there's a lot of exposed adhesive over here, I'm gonna probably end up getting my hands stuck, but I did wanna show you the section only because it is one that's got a lot of the same color right through here. So let's get started. This is like a game of Tetris to me. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the game Tetris. It hasn't been around for a long time. Um, it's not very popular anymore, but basically it's like two and three blocks that coming down and you have to find a place to put them. So whatever I end up picking up on this tool, that is where I'm going to find a section with that many drills and stick it down. The other thing I wanna mention is that I like working with this tool vertically instead of horizontally because I can see around it. I work left to right because I am right-handed. What that means is, is that my tool is not blocking where I'm going. If I put some tools here, some drills here, and I try to come to the other side of it, I tend to get them out of place and then I'm adjusting and I'm trying to you know, work faster. So once I start working on this and putting these down, I'm not gonna talk because I'm actually gonna be timing it so I can tell you exactly how long it took me to put this section down. And what I wanna do is, is figure out what section. I'm gonna do 50 drills, and we're gonna keep it real time. Okay, so 50 drills, excuse me, 50 drills is this little section right in here. And I'm gonna do that section, and we're gonna see how quickly I can put down 50 drills. Now when I'm picking these up, I'm kinda of pressing hard. I'm getting three on my tool at one time. I come over here and I place them down and you see how perfect that is? Back here, two at a time, right there. If I pick up three, then I'm gonna find a place to put three. If I only can pick up two for some reason, then I'm just gonna pick that two up. I'm not gonna try to go back and pick up a third. If I mess up, I do not stop. I will go back and fix all of my mess ups at the same time. Now I'm turning it horizontally and I'm gonna put it at the top of this section right here. And then I'm gonna work below and I'm gonna turn it horizontally again and work below the section I just did. It's really hard, I think, for me to get these lined up as exactly perfectly when I do it horizontally but it's okay because it is still quicker. Now, I'm gonna go in and do the individual ones that are still left that I didn't get to, and I'm done. So I just adjusted a few, and what I just counted, I realized um, that I did more than 50. I actually did 55 in that amount of time. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this other section, I'm gonna see how many of these would be 55, and then I'm gonna be doing these individually, one at a time. Okay, so the section that will be 55 is gonna be down through here, all of this right here, and then these three right in here. So let's get started with these individually. 
I'm going to shake this again and get it ready. Even though I'm only doing individuals, it's not necessarily as important to get them straightened up. There we go. Now, ready? Oh, and I'm also, if you notice, I'm also keeping my, my tray very close to where I'm working. If I keep it over here and I'm going like this, think about amount, the amount of time that it takes for me to go from here to here in comparison to the amount of time it takes me to go from here to here. So that is another way to speed up your process. Now let me get some wax. I've got some wax in here. So let's get started. Ready and go. Okay, so that is how long it took me to do 55 individual drills. I did have to get up in the middle of that and take care of my dog who was howling at a warning alarm from the power station. So, um, but I'm gonna not count that in my time, obviously. So you see how meticulous and how slow that process was one at a time. Now you may be new at this, and that is the process that you need to use to feel confident. But, but when you can get a three drill multi uh, placement tool and try it, you'll notice that I kept getting little wax blobs coming off on my single pin, but when I used it with the, the three, I didn't have to wipe anything off and I didn't have any excess wax or anything that needed to be you know, messed with. It was just a quick process. Now, I want you to pay attention. You can't see this from where I have it. I'm gonna try to zoom in on this, but there are some different patterns right in here mixed in with the color I'm doing with the 820s. So I'm gonna show you how I use the multi-use tool and avoid those other colors and still make this efficient. All right, let's get our little tray ready again. And we're gonna do this section right here, and I'm gonna see how long it takes me to do this section, avoiding this other color number. Okay, ready? Let's go. Now I'll scoot these two together to fill this one little spot of two. If they're, if my drills have kind of moved apart from each other, then I will kind of, like I said, scoot them together um, and then just place them. And you'll notice I'm picking up three and two, depending on the section. I will come back and fix that one. In a minute, my wax might need to be kind of adjusted a little bit. And again, I'm paying very close attention to what number, what, what a color code that I'm working on because there are a couple of others kind of mixed in here. 
And so I'm kind of taking more time just to be sure that I'm not um, stepping over into another color because they're very similar. Now, when I start getting to the point where I'm, it's getting difficult to get in here and get um, drills, because they're not really lined up so much anymore, then I'm just gonna fix that again and go back in. All right, so that one is two. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna start picking up just two and placing those in the couple of places that it looks like I have two. Actually, I think that's pretty much it. The rest of them are singles. And I'm just gonna go in here and fill those little single spots and adjust any that I didn't get exactly perfect to begin with. It's almost like editing a paper. You know, you type your paper up, you don't go back and you don't fix really typos and errors and all that. You go to the end and then you go back and do it. Well, you see how quickly I did that section. And that was stopping and readjusting my trays um, and my drills and, you know, making placement, working around those other codes and that kind of thing. So I'm telling you, if you can get used to it, this little multi-drill tool will speed up your process like you would not believe. This is a very large canvas. I do work, I've said it in the past, I work, um, you know, 20 to 30 hours a week. I have a new husband, I have a three-year-old grandson, I have one that's almost gonna be one, I'm designing his party for him, and I have a nine-year-old granddaughter. I mean, like, I have stuff going on all the time. And so I can't just sit down and do diamond paintings. If I could, I could probably finish this one in a few days with these techniques. Um, if, But you can see how much more efficient this method is once you get the hang of it. All I'm gonna tell you is practice, practice, practice. If you get a diamond painting that has large sections of white or black or just one particular color, that is the perfect opportunity for you to play with your multi-drill tool. The other thing is, keep in mind, now if you are left-handed, which I'm not, so it's very awkward for me to even hold this in my left hand, you're going to move from right to left when you're placing, keeping your pin vertical. If you do have to keep it horizontal, you wanna work it top to bottom. Okay, so basically if I'm gonna do this horizontally, I'm gonna keep this tool this direction and do this way, because if I'm going up this way, it's very hard to see past my drills and to get this tool where it needs to be and placed correctly. I will spend more time adjusting and fixing and messing with the, dr the drills that I've placed instead of moving on and adding more. All right, you guys, I hope this video has been very helpful for you. I hope that you will let me know what tips you have found that have sped up your diamond painting process. If there's anything I have forgotten to mention today, I would love for you to comment in a positive way and let me know because I know there's probably things that I've overlooked that I do, but they're so standard for me or they're so normal for me now that I forget to go back to the basics and kind of remember what, you know, the little small steps. So definitely contribute what you have that you would like me to add to a video in the future. This, thank you for watching as always, and please don't forget to subscribe, like, share, comment, and come back and watch more videos in the future.